The east may still be red, but there's a lot of green as well. Another billion dollar deal involving Arkansas, which means what? With our four delegates in the majority, what could their budget bill mean for Arkansas and for the governor? New pressure in a life or death decision. Arkansas Week, next. Local broadcast of Arkansas Week is made possible in part by the award-winning Arkansas Democrat Gazette, Arkansas's largest major newspaper, bringing you local, national, and international news since 1819. By the Arkansas Times, keeping you informed by covering people, events, and politics in Arkansas. By FM 89, KUAR in Little Rock, with in-depth news reporting, analysis, and discussion each weekday. Hello again, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Arkansas Week. We're going to begin with the Arkansas economy and the world. Billions of dollars flying around now. Jacob Kaufman joins us from KUAR Public Radio in Central Arkansas. Whit Purvis, an independent journalist, columnist for Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette, and Wesley Brown with Talk Business and Politics. Wes, let's start with you. Once again, Mr. Mm -hmm. Hutchinson is headed east mm -hmm. to China. Yeah, uh, he, he's heading east after uh, announcing a big deal with uh, uh, Riseover. It's a heavy equipment company that's going to come to Jonesboro. They're going to invest about $20 million. They make these big uh, forks on the end of uh, heavy equipment, and, and they're going to bring about 120 to 150 jobs, uh, paying about 18 to $20 an hour. And uh, so, you know, he's going back to China. This is his... I think his third or fourth trip uh, over to China, and he's really hit a sweet spot, uh, especially in the Shandong province, where he's uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 if the first big announcement, of course, was Sun Paper and Arkadef, and they're starting, they're, they're going to be starting construction on their big project in Arkadef in, in the next few months, and that's, that's over well over a billion. And then there's uh, the announcement in Forest City, I think, was the clothing, Tier 1. Um, garment manufacturing. They're going to be in Forest City. That's a pretty big project, uh, uh, several hundred, hundred million. And then in North Little Rock, there's another announcement. I can't think of the company, but they're going, they made an announcement there. So that's four uh, major companies, big investments. Uh, uh, he's going over. And I, we talked to Mike Preston, who's the economic development chief, and he uh, believes that there are some other uh, uh, may be some announcements after they come back from China of, of some other deals that they have in the pipeline. May not be be announcement after they get back, but maybe s several months before the end of the year, they may make some announcements. Of, so uh, Hutchinson obviously has good relations with, with China, and it's interesting because China Premier has announced in recent months that uh, China is going to pull back on some of the investment in the United States, given some of the Trump uh, 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 trade trade uh, uh, issues and and so it's interesting that Arkansas still has a, a kind of a, a, a really good relations with China so it's it's uh, it's good for Arkansas and even at a time when the, the job numbers are really good we're gonna probably see that that number at 3.5 percent uh, unemployment rate stay or stay or around that that point so it's really good for Arkansas previous governors mr. Hutchinson's predecessors have been reluctant I think it's fair to say mm -hmm. very reluctant Right. to go overseas on these sort of missions for fear of whatever. Mr. Hutchinson has, has shown no such reluctance. No, he, he uh, uh, a few months ago, he went to, to, to Mexico doing when, when it was hit by earthquakes. He, I, you know, I thought we were going to get an announcement that after, it was on the day of the big earthquake, and he said, I'm still going. And he's been to Europe. He's been to, uh, like, like you said, China several times. He's go on this trip, he's going to Japan. So... Uh, and our, like you say, our predecessor, his predecessor, Mike Beebe, just was just reluctant to, to go on these trips. So it is interesting, and uh, uh, that he's going anywhere that where he feels like he can, and establish these relationships and, and and bring back more jobs to Arkansas. And it's not just the governor going there routine, mm -hmm. routinely, which he's sort of done to try mm -hmm. to establish these personal relationships. The mm -hmm. state also has economic development offices yeah. in several mm -hmm. of these nations, so mm -hmm. they have a permanent presence there. But. You're right, that's something the governor surely, certainly doesn't shy away from. It's something 
during the campaign where he said, I'm going to make calls personally every day to try mm -hmm. to bring a business. And I think Mike Ross, the Democrat at the time, kind of scoffed at that. But mm -hmm. that's something Hutchinson clearly wants to be known as. Yeah, and on his stump speeches, you always hear him talk about jobs. I mean, uh, I've, yeah, never, I've never heard him speak to a Rotary Club or mm -hmm. any group and not mention the economy or jobs that he's bringing back to our, that's his, his big pitch along with computer coding. That, those are the two big issues that he always brings up. Yeah. I, th I think we could say that uh, Governor Hutchinson has become the Marco Polo of our time. <laughs> I mean, he really, uh, it's, uh, it's really quite impressive what he's been able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, whatever uh, differences there may be, China's where the action is. I yeah. mean, there, you know, there's, there is investment uh, coming out of China, uh, and this is another, I think, the, the, what, the fifth mm -hmm. example, I think. And, and it's a real, uh, although this is not a huge deal, this rise of her, rise ever, mm -hmm. whatever the proper <laughs> yeah. name is, uh, it's, uh, it's still quite significant. It's a, it's a real coup for Arkansas and, and for Jonesboro in particular. I, I know apparently Forest City was also in the running for this. They mm -hmm. got, uh, as, as Wes mentioned, they got uh, an earlier uh, plant to, to be located there. But uh, this is a, a, a big deal, certainly for Northeast Arkansas. And, and, yeah, and he, you know, he's made a point to, to try to target the Delta with, uh, <coughs> with, with some of these jobs, too, because the Delta, uh, obviously, during, during the decline of manufacturing, Delta lost thousands and thousands of jobs. So I think it's, he's, he's been trying to bring some of those jobs, Jonesboro, uh, Arkansas is South Arkansas, but you know it's it's still kind of connected to the del Delta, and then of course Forest City. So, so I mean, though that that's a, that's pretty big. I, I I think it's interesting to to note uh, how how things have changed over the years. And you're talking about the Delta, and, mm -hmm. and of course we have the big steel facilities right. over, yeah, big over in Mississippi County now. And uh, recently, I saw that uh, Congressman Crawford is going to be co-chair of the Congressional Steel, Steel Caucus. Caucus. <laughs> who would have ever thought a congressman from Eastern Arkansas? Okay, so. but, but it just shows you in Mississippi County, you know, at one time the uh, largest cotton uh, producing mm -hmm. uh, county in the country is the second most populated uh, county in the state of Arkansas. And now it's making something of a, of a comeback in steel, and the mm -hmm. and the, this facility in Jonesboro is going to be involved with with steel parts, I think, right. for heavy equipment. So, uh, very interesting uh, e evolution <laughs> of the economic interest in that area. Definitely worth noting that Governor Hutchinson's not bringing these companies here surely through his charisma and charm, but there's hundreds of millions, tens of millions of dollars in state incentives for all these packages, and uh, you know we'll have to see how those investments really weigh out years right. down the line. Yeah, right. you, know, you, you noted, he noted Big River Steel, they've paid back some of right. their uh, 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 incentives. Long, yeah, <laughs> yeah, incentives to the state. So that, that, and, and that one is, is go really going to have, a, I think, the biggest impact of all these uh, major announcements over the last uh, the two years that Hutchinson, since, since he's taken office. So. Yeah, wor worth noting too, all the more remarkable because as Hoyt mentioned, amid all that cotton, Mm -hmm. Those cotton fields in Mississippi County, there was once also a big Air Force base. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Exactly. And when finally that base was shuttered, I mean, that was a really, people wondered if Mississippi <laughs> County could ever mm -hmm. overcome that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be making some progress. Mm -hmm. Jonesboro, Wes, everyone, mm -hmm. would seem in recent decades, right. in fact, mm -hmm. to have done quite well. Mm -hmm. the, the northeast corner especially, but particularly Jonesboro done quite well in terms of, of manufacturing. Yeah, uh, and, and, and they, they really hit a sweet spot in terms of, uh, of uh, paper, paper goods and also foods. Uh, Kellogg and uh, cereal companies, are they, they've, they've got I think about three or four cereal manufacturers up there. And I think that, you know, you mentioned uh, Jonesboro economy in northeast Arkansas. It's really grown, but it's been kind of, you, we've noticed it's grown at the same time as Northwest Arkansas, and it's kind of nobody noticed what all, all the development in, in, in Northeast Arkansas. You go to Jonesboro now, and you see uh, not only uh, in terms of manufacturing, but road construction, and, and, and so it's really uh, uh, that part of the economy is uh, banking. Uh, so it's really becoming a, a, a real economic engine for that part of the and state. The, and the hospitals and health care. Right. Really. Mm -hmm. One of the things that hindered Jonesboro for a long time was the lack of mm -hmm. interstate highway. Mm -hmm. uh, and now that's no longer an issue. They have interstate uh, mm -hmm. quality yeah, 60, or yeah, caliber yeah. Uh, 
highways that that really uh, is important if you're going to get these big uh, industrial investments you've got you've got to have transportation mm -hmm. well you've all it, it would help uh, I think and Jonesboro in fact does have a major educational institution mm -hmm. can right. we calculate to what extent anyone the presence of ASU there which has expanded its research yeah well being, on, being an ASU alum I, uh, since I've been up there you know uh, it's just uh, you, you you go go back and you every time there's something you'd say wow uh, yeah. the access to the, the college and you uh, the Agri School up there is is really really big, big and has a plays a part in bringing some keeping that Agri tied to that community still alive and they've done a great job with that. But educational opportunities that the university has grown uh, probably for the last decade uh, enrollment numbers has continued to move upward. They've also uh, uh, strengthened their connections with ASU outside of the Jonesboro area. Uh, the the coach the football coach was at uh, at the Little Rock uh, touchdown club this this past week and and they maintain uh, office here now in Little Rock so yep. uh, they've done a great job educationally also one other thing on China before we move on and uh, Hoyt spent more time in China than <laughs> Clinton has spent in McDonald's but, <laughs> but but it's something that Wes touched on and that is China being a I don't want to say more cautious in terms of its overseas investment, but it is not as, and China's huge, but it is not as though China doesn't have its own set of internal economic <laughs> difficulties as well. Mm -hmm. It may have overbuilt too fast, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think there's any question about that, and it's really interesting. We've just re recently gone through the the People's Congress there, and and the fact that uh, the current uh, prime minister is going to be sticking around for a while, mm -hmm. and and more uh, powerful than mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly, probably, certainly since uh, Deng Xiaoping and and back to the days of, of Chairman Mao. But um, it's it's. I think what we can look for is that he's going to he's going to keep a, a tighter rein. I mean, the, the sort of bonanza days mm -hmm. have uh, have I think scaled back now a, a good bit in China, and they're and I think they're they're trying to be sort of more rational, more organized, have a sort of a, a, an overall plan mm -hmm. much much more clearly than than has been evident in the last couple of decades. Mm. Not to suggest, guys, that West, particularly that the state has all its eggs mm. in, mm -hmm. in the Chinese basket. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but plainly, that's where the big money has been, I think, over the yeah, last Yeah, yeah, and, and, you know, uh, as, as, as Hart noticed, uh, China is, is seeing some uh, bigger, really good investments uh, in Africa, going to other places, seeing where because there is more growth potential in those areas, and and and, and the, the other issue, of, of course, and, and the elephant in the room, of course, is what is Trump going to do? What in terms of you know his his he's taking this hard line stance in in terms of of how he's going to treat uh, China, and uh, you always have the North Korea issue that affects all the other relations, the trade relations, and it's so. So that's going to play a big role. I think that plays a big role in how they're pulling back, in, well, in a sense, to say, hey, and, and the big thing is China has the biggest economy in the world now. Uh, well, we should mention that uh, President Trump himself is headed in that direction as well. Yeah. He's got mm -hmm. a, a series <laughs> of major uh, meetings over the coming week that uh, could could uh, result in some, some interesting and in significant developments. Right? Yeah, more than just economic. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, and one quick note on this, because we, as we go to press, as it were, this morning, uh, the government reports 3% three mm -hmm. percent yeah. Yeah. 3Q growth. Yeah, that's, that's the second straight quarter of 3% growth, uh, up 4%. The forecast from Wall Street was was 2.6 percent, and we've seen 3 percent growth. Uh, this is the the first reading. Yeah. There's actually three readings that that <coughs> we'll get, and sometimes those are revised, and so we'll see uh, uh, if they're they're revised upward or downward. But you know, the fact that it's at 3 percent shows uh, 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 a level of stability that we we uh, may, maybe you you still have to see more quarters, but. You know, two quarters of three percent is 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 interesting to say the least. Yeah, you know? and and finally, this we we have the the Fed is due. The committee is supposed to meet well, uh, later this year anyway. Mm -hmm. Another tick. What's that? Yeah, it's, one, it's one, widely expected. Yeah, yeah, it's widely expected. One more uh, uh, interest rate hike, probably a quarter quarter point. Uh, one one, uh, and we're probably going to hear something about possibly an announcement of a new uh, Fed chief. Uh, 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 Trump, Donald, President Trump has been uh, kind of uh, uh, 
predicting that. Uh, he, uh, he, he haven't said it out loud, but he said he's going to announce a new Fed chief probably before the end of the year. So. Still with business and old line, old, old, old line, <laughs> Arkansas family uh, and company. Uh, and a billion dollar transaction. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Delta here. Yeah, uh, Delta, uh, which is you know tied to the Murphy uh, Oil clan. Uh, it, they split off from Murphy Oil, I think, back in 1996. And this is they've been getting a lot of investor pressure because of uh, their their stock price hasn't been doing well. They're, they're they have uh, a big real estate arm out in uh, uh, West Little Rock, Chennault Valley, and they also have uh, a lot of manufacturing down in South Arkansas, Forestry, Timberland. And they did, really didn't have any growth, and, and, but they, they had pressure from their investor for the last nine months, and they decided to tie, tie the ties with Potlatch. Potlatch is out of Spokane, Washington. They have, they have big operations down in South Arkansas. They have a, a plant down in Warren. Uh, so they, they, uh, so it's really going to be a big company. They still won't be able to compete with Weyerhaeuser or International Paper, but it gives them a little bit more breadth to be able to, to uh, uh, compete in this uh, really competitive. One of the interesting notes is that uh, uh, all these, uh, all the nation's forestry land is now in in these real estate investment trusts, right. and and that uh, it it's it's has more advantage to the investors than. Uh, so it's going to be interesting how that how plays out over the next few years. I yeah, think it involves, what well, I was just going to say, I think it involves something like a million acres yeah. uh, mm -hmm. of timberland in, in South Arkansas. So that's a Will very Arkansas major deal. note much difference? Uh, no, well, uh, e anytime you have a, a merger, uh, the South Arkansas Delta uh, offices is based in El Dorado, Arkansas. You might see some administrative positions, executive positions go away because Potlatch is the so-called company that's that's the, the bigger company, uh, and their headquarters are going to be. They're going to have a regional office in El Dorado, but they're going to they're not going to be at their company headquarters. So you may see that. That the other thing you you maybe want to watch is uh, lumber prices. Will this have any Im impact on lumber prices? Uh, uh, University of Arkansas. Uh, uh, down in Monticello, there there are people who said prices are going to stay stable for a while, but uh, we could see them ratchet up over the next year. Listen so. to the uh, CEOs about these companies in mm. an investor call this week, and mm. they said uh, Potlatch expects that the timberlands in South Arkansas will have a 30 to 40 percent increase in being harvested, which mm. seems like a mm -hmm. pretty significant number, and mm -hmm. they expected uh, existing mills to operate at full capacity through mm -hmm. a second shift when they weren't before necessarily all Deltix mills. Mm -hmm. And some of these, from an environmental perspective, I'll go ahead and add, add this in, <laughs> Uh, some of the existing land or deltic is like old growth forest, yeah. right. and so they'll be, they'll be replaced with plantation style mm -hmm. uh, timber harvests as, as they end up cutting them down. So different life for the critters of South Arkansas <laughs> in these forests as well. Uh, uh, yeah, tell that to the guys who are going to be cutting and milling. You know, that's a, the environmental issue. I'm afraid for them is going to be secondary. But let's mm -hmm. move on. All four, not surprisingly, all four members of the Arkansas House delegation, Dr. Kaufman. Voted mm. I when it came <laughs> when it came to the budget bill. Yeah, so not a uh, total surprise, but mm -hmm. this is an important step, I guess, uh, of course, for the administration of the country, but also politically for the Republicans in Congress, who have struggled on every major item, whether it be uh, health care and uh, tax cuts. Up until this point, perhaps. Well, they're still struggling. But well, <laughs> well, we'll see. But that's true. But uh, they did get something shepherded through that inc included about, I think, uh, one and a half trillion dollars worth of tax cuts. Mm -hmm. I wish Steve Bronner was on the show the, to talk about a little bit about the deficit, his favorite issue. There's <laughs> questions, of course, about how these tax cuts will be paid for. Uh, Donald Trump, though, all along has said during his campaign to tie it back into GDP that increases in GDP will somehow Cover this. Uh, yes. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it, it, I mean, it does raise the question of where are the deficit hawks? You know, where, <laughs> where and, uh, so many uh, of these uh, successful uh, legislative uh, representatives have uh, been uh, arguing for a, a constitutional amendment for a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. This is about as far away from a balanced budget as you can get. Now, I mean, the, the rationale for uh, what the House and Senate have passed on the budget resolutions is to enable them to get into uh, the uh, considering the, the changes in the in the tax taxes. Uh, they call it tax reform. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't I don't know if reform is really going to be uh, the right word once we see what they come up with. I think 
it's we been ought to say reshape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's revise, been referred to as an overhaul, and mm, maybe yeah, yeah. maybe an overhaul is the right uh, way to put it. But but uh, all the the members of the Arkansas delegation all talk about the fact that uh, you know it's still critical to find ways to uh, cut down the deficit. But the reality is that it, it looks like we're headed toward, as as Wes mentioned, you know, a, a huge uh, a huge deficit here that. Uh, uh, is is going to be used as the as the stepping stone to what they call tax reform. Yeah, well, the, act, yeah, yeah, the, the budget was n noted; it's four trillion dollars, uh, and and, the, and, the, and I, I think the goal is to introduce something, uh, introduce, get it passed by November. I think sort of the, to try to give the Trump administration a, a major victory before his so-called first anniversary. So, uh, uh, but still, as you said, the, the, there has been no discussion of deficits, and the, the key issue, of course, are you going to be able to peel off three? Uh, you you got to hold, make sure that three <coughs> Republicans do not uh, go against this. So. Yeah, well, and, and part of this, Hoyt, is the maneuvering here. It's a little, a little bit inside, but it's, <coughs> the mechanism is designed to prevent or allow this to be done without... 60 votes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that's part of, of what's hap what we're seeing now is the right. whole budget. The budget resolution itself is basically a shell at this point. I mean, mm -hmm. that, it's just you know the the the, uh, the gross amount is there, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, and we've got this situation where the Trump administration, to put it mildly, has not had a lot of success in in getting a major legislation through. And of course, we all know about the the health care uh, legislation, but they really are, are putting their all their marbles for now on on the on the tax uh, overhaul as we'll call it uh, and uh, I don't think there's any guarantee that they're going to be successful now right. I think there's a good chance but you've got things like the the, the uh, debate about salt you know which is not the strategic arms, arms limitations, but it has to do with state and local taxes. Mm -hmm. It could be nuclear, the, the though. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, you know, there there are some really hot uh, hot issues there, and and some some significant uh, sectors of of Congress are are not at all uh, sold on on what's what's currently on the table. Okay, moving on. The there was a uh, a letter signed Jacob this week. We've got an execution pending in about two weeks, mm -hmm. roughly two weeks. Uh, once again, the decision will ultimately be up to uh, Mr. Hutchinson as chief executive as to whether to grant clemency. Uh, and uh, and a, a group of attorneys sort of ratcheted the pressure up this past week. Yeah. And I think unlike the last time where we talked about executions where they tried to do so many in such a short time span, because it is just one man at this point, there's a little bit of mm -hmm. extra time, I think, to explore each case really and think it out, at least publicly. And so there's a, a letter signed by 28, I believe, mental health professionals sent to the governor this week. Arkansas health professionals, a lot of them, uh, not all of them representing the companies they work for necessarily, but American Bar Association chimed in as well to say that mm -hmm. that these health professionals are personally on different sides of whether the death penalty is good or bad or should happen or should not happen, but they agreed, at least these people in this letter, that uh, Jack Green has mental health issues that date back prior to his murders and that have uh, grown and increased in intensity and severity. As he's been diagnosed with a psychotic disorder. It, you, every time you see him in a picture, if he yeah. shows up to yeah. parole hearings, he's got tissue paper out of his ears and his nose, and he thinks his attorneys are conspiring with the state and prison officials mm -hmm. to harm him all the time. Uh, so, it, you know, and lots of delusions. But it, they say that, uh, you know, even if he is guilty and uh, he says he's guilty, uh, and then regardless of whether or not you think the death penalty is a good thing or not, that it's unethical and unconstitutional mm -hmm. to uh, execute someone who, does, who would not be aware of what was going on. Yeah, the process. Yeah. yeah, the process or why he's being executed or mm -hmm. who's really doing it. Yeah, and, and, and also you know, the pressure is ratcheting up from his attorneys. You're starting to get more communications from the attorneys uh, and, and uh, obviously as we've seen in the other, you're going to see more court filings uh, 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 up until uh, uh, the actual exec execution if it takes place. Uh, of course, as, as we noted, the governor has said that, you know, it, these are the gravest decisions that he makes, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he he takes a lot of time. So so probably next week, sometime we're gonna we're gonna know uh, where it's gonna happen. And there have been several cases, not just this one, but the, in the past as well, about 
attorneys making the case that inmates on death row, that their health has gotten so bad under state care that it makes them unable to execute them. So that's a whole other issue about mm -hmm. why are all these people on death row, all these inmates under state care, why is their health de deteriorating throughout decades? Mm -hmm. We've got to end it there because we're out of time. Guys, thanks to you for coming in. As always, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. Local broadcast of Arkansas Week is made possible in part by the award-winning Arkansas Democrat Gazette, Arkansas's largest major newspaper, bringing you local, national, and international news since 1819. By the Arkansas Times, keeping you informed by covering people, events, and politics in Arkansas. By FM 89, KUAR in Little Rock, with in-depth news reporting, analysis, and discussion each weekday.